What is up food fans? It's Bobby and today we are making meatloaf meal prep with two healthy and delish side dishes because I want to hook you up for every single day next week with my beefy meatloaf loaded with vegetables and a chili ketchup glaze, roasted beet salad with walnuts, and roasted parsnip fries. So do me a favor, subscribe to my channel and hook a brother up because I have new videos every Friday morning and I want you, my fellow food fans of the world, to be a part of them. In front of me, I have two pounds of beets and you can see I snipped off the top and bottoms. I'm just gonna take this and put it on a sheet tray that's lined with tin foil. Now there is a shortcut for preparing our beets, but I'll tell you about that later on. For now, we're going old school style. Drizzle in one tablespoon of olive oil, then add one teaspoon of salt, and then a few cracks of pepper. And because I want these to roast and steam in the oven at the same time, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of water. And then go ahead and grab another piece of tin foil and just make a pouch and crimp the sides. Now this special delivery goes in a 400 degree oven for one hour. To start the beefy meatloaf, I am preheating a pan over medium heat. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil and then go in with some carrots, onion, and red bell pepper. And then grab the salt and immediately go in with a half a teaspoon and then a few cracks of pepper. To cook the vegetables or not to cook the vegetables because earlier this year I was on Cutthroat Kitchen on the Food Network and I did not get a chance to cook the vegetable base because I only had 30 minutes. I made it, I thought it was good, but I went home. Cooking them will help pull out the extra liquid and make the raw flavor of the vegetable go away and actually sweeten them up. But hey, I tasted it and I've made it where I don't cook it first and it's good. So Cutthroat Kitchen, I'm coming back for you. After a couple minutes, grab one teaspoon of dried thyme and add it to the pan. After a couple minutes, I'm gonna grab two cloves of garlic that have been finely diced. We're gonna cook this five minutes more until everything's soft and the onions are translucent. And the reason why I wait on the garlic until halfway is because garlic burns very easily. So it only needs about half the cooking time. It's been 10 or 12 minutes total, and you can see all the moisture has come out of the vegetables. They softened up. In front of me, I have two pounds of ground beef. Now, sometimes you go to the market and you see 80-20, 90-10. That just means the beef to fat ratio. If you're trying to cut fat, do 90-10, but know that it's very lean. It can dry out very easily. I prefer 80-20. That's what I have here. A little more fat is a little more flavor and it keeps our meatloaf super moist. The first thing we're gonna do to our ground beef is crack one egg in there. The egg is gonna be the binder that keeps everything together. Next up, I have panko breadcrumbs, which are Japanese style breadcrumbs. They're very coarse and crunchy and I love them. Next up, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Add a teaspoon of salt, a few cracks of pepper, and then grab our veggie mixture and add that to the bowl. Now, if you're not gonna cook this meatloaf immediately, it's super important that the veggie mixture cools down. Otherwise, you're gonna raise the temperature of the ground beef and it's gonna get into the unsafe zone and you might get sick. Now I'm fixing to get my hands all messy and mix up this mixture nice so everything is well incorporated. By the way, I am loving doing these meal prep recipes with you guys because this is the kind of food I eat and whether you make them for all five days next week or just pick out one component or one side dish, it's all good. So if you wanna see more, you can leave a comment below and recommend what you want me to make. I will totally hook you up because I'm loving it. All right, let's transfer this guy to a sheet tray. Timber! Isn't this called pan de carne in South America? Is that right? Tell me below. And that is one perfectly symmetrical loaf of meat that my wife definitely did not help me with when she put the camera down a few minutes ago. Definitely did not, this is my masterpiece. Let me wash my hands and then we'll make the ketchup glaze. I'm gonna add half a cup of ketchup to a bowl, then a tablespoon or two of Tabasco sauce, a couple tablespoons of agave nectar, you guys can also use honey, but I love the agave nectar because it's low on the glycemic index. Just go ahead and mix this guy up and then we'll spread it all over the loaf of meat. And then give this guy a little Swedish massage and rub the glaze all over. I mean, this is classic Americana, right guys? A ketchup glaze, of course. The judge for Cutthroat Kitchen came out and said she does not like ketchup glazes, but I think all of us did it anyway, but I don't know what red-blooded American doesn't love a good ketchup glaze on their meatloaf. Now before we pop the sucker in the oven, let's make sure the beets are done because they cook at different temperatures and you can't put them in at the same time. All right, the anticipation is riveting right now. now actually be careful when you open the tin foil because the steam will burn your eyeballs off. It's almost happened to me and I know a guy who knows a guy who had it happen. So kind of just step away. 
Now here's how you tell if they're done. Go ahead and grab a paring knife and insert it in the deepest part of the beet. If the knife goes in and out with relative ease, it's done. If it's still kind of tough or it won't let go of the knife, stick it back in the oven. These are done. I'm gonna lower the temperature of my oven to 350 degrees and get the meatloaf bacon. The meatloaf is gonna take one hour or until the internal temperature hits 155 degrees. In the meantime, we got some beets to peel. You want them to cool down just a little bit, but still be warm, otherwise it's really hard for the skin to come off. So what I do is take a couple pieces of paper towel, carefully use the paper towel to peel the skin off. And because they're still warm, it happens relatively easy. And then it just reveals the beautiful purple flesh underneath. That one looks perfect right there. Now I did mention something earlier about a huge shortcut for the beets. I've noticed a lot of stores have pre-steamed or pre-roasted beets, and that is a monster time saver, but the flavor is not nearly as good as roasting yourself. Plus, you guys, you're gonna miss out on achieving what's known as the purple finger syndrome. Rawr. I'm gonna take the beets and cut them into bite-sized pieces. Let's add the last of it to a bowl. If you guys know a hack or an easier way to peel a beet, let me know. I'm super curious if there's one out there. To season our roasted beets and make them bomb.com, I'm gonna grab a little bit of olive oil and hit it up with about a tablespoon. And you guys know I've never met a lemon I haven't zested first. So add the zest of one lemon and the juice of half. The sour lemon is gonna balance the sweetness from the beets perfectly and wake up the flavor completely. Add some chopped and toasted walnuts, a good tablespoon of freshly chopped parsley, half a teaspoon of salt, and a couple cracks of fresh pepper. A super simple preparation, but those are the best kinds. Just give this a mix up and the salad is done. Might as well do some QC, some quality control while I'm here. Mm. The beets are so creamy and sweet, sour from the lemon juice, popping like it's hot from the walnuts. This is so good. And while we're waiting for the meatloaf to finish, we can make my roasted parsnip fries. They're the same ones I made in my New York strip steak recipe video. Super easy, so tasty, and this is how you do it. Peel a few parsnips and chop them into half inch thick fries. Season them with a couple shots of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of kosher salt, a couple cracks of fresh pepper, and one teaspoon of dried thyme. Toss the parsnips on a sheet tray and bake them in a 425 degree oven for about 30 to 45 minutes until they're golden brown. If you guys haven't tried parsnip fries, get on it. It's kind of like a potato and a celery made sweet, sweet love and got it on and it's some serious deliciousness. Check this out, my foodie friends. This is a loaf of meaty excellence. Nice and caramelized on the outside. It took just over an hour to make. We have to let it cool. We're gonna slice it and we're gonna make our meal prep containers and be hooked up. All right, I've got my buffet of deliciousness ready. My five meal prep containers for the week. Let's start building. I'm gonna grab the meatloaf that's sliced. Just tuck it right in the corner here. Look how juicy that is. The glaze is nice and sticky. You can see those chunks of delicious veggies all throughout. Let's grab some parsnip frites. Put those in the middle. Nice, I love those caramelized bits. And last but not least, the beet salad. I am really excited about this meal. All right, four more and I'm done. All five containers are done and I think I owe it to myself after all that work to sneak a little bite from tomorrow night's to dinner. Let's grab this meatloaf. You guys, that is just straight up happy food. Good old Americana. The meat is so flavorful and juicy. I love those flecks of carrots in there. And I love how the beets pair perfectly with the meat, cutting through that richness. The parsnips are roasty and caramelized. This is awesome meal prep that I am so stoked about. And it just looks great. And you always eat with your eyes first. Guys, if you want the recipe, and I know you do, it is below in the description box. Check it out. Also, subscribe to my channel. New videos out every Friday morning, and I want you, my foodie friends, to be the first ones to see them. If you wanna see more videos, especially meal prep, check out the ones streaming below me. But I will see you next week. Until then, you know I'm gonna say unto you what I always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Later, guys.